Well, hello there. As I used to always say at my open mic, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am reading for you right now during the first Wednesday of the month, which is not for my own open mic, but for an open mic hosted by another transplant to Austin, Texas, Tom Woodruff uh, from Australia. He would welcome people to Half Price Books at North and Lamar to read poetry in 10 minute rounds. And there were just many features for everyone to read. And I would always be thrilled at the beginning of every month to be able to come in and read material from New Scars Publications books. Um, an organization that I have assembled and um, accomplished by editing two literary magazines, CC&D magazine, with collections books like this newly released, What Lies on the Other Side, but also, which I was going to read something for you from this book right now, the Down in the Dirt magazine, the second magazine, it used to be a supplement section of CC&D magazine actually, but they spun it off on its own in the new millennium, and this is an issue collection book from Down in the Dirt of the January through April issues, titled Excerpts from the Plague Years, which seems like a very appropriate title when we're all worried about trying to not be near anyone and wear masks everywhere we go and and do what the government says and take a, a medication that might not be tested well enough, but we can only hope. A girl can always hope, as I would like to say. <laughs> so I thought I would read to you some poems from the back section of section two from this book. And, you know, Tom Woodruff would have all of these glasses, reading glasses and frames, and I think there's photos of me trying them all on and showing them off, and I've got one here. They're not my glasses, but I do this in honor of Tom. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy. I might read, I don't know, seven poems? I have no idea. Um, but I hope you enjoy these poems. This first poem that I was going to share with you actually has an image that accompanies it. I believe it is the only one that has an image that accompanies it. But if you've got a short poem, at least if I do, if I have an image that would uh, accompany it well, I would release it as an Instagram image that would appear on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr. And, and this one has an image as well. And I have no idea if cameras can see this. I'm holding it up just so that you can see this, you know, shot in the forest for this poem that's called just let me have my space. Um, but if you'd like to see this image that is in it, and you can see it in color and bigger, um, you can always go to scars.tv and search for excerpts from the Plague Years, and you will find a link to this image. I believe it'll be from Twitter instead of being from Instagram or Tumblr or Facebook. So you can find it and you can see it in color and check that out as well. But um, part of that poem is in this Instagram image for the poem that is titled, Just Let Me Have My Space. <sighs> All these years, it was just me and my dad. He taught me to trust no one, to be self-reliant. You would call it staying off the grid, but my dad knew what was, what was best. He taught me to read. He knew that government schools only teach you what they want you to know. And when I first saw my dad shoot a gun, I knew this way was the only life I'd ever lead. So I stayed with him. He was all I knew. And dad was like my God. So I don't know who was right and who was wrong when people in uniforms came out of our land when they had no right to barge in. Oh, wait, I guess that I'm now defining what is right and what is wrong. But after all that happened recently, I don't know if us wanting to keep our privacy is reason enough to shoot any intruders or, or if it's okay that we just get so exasperated with the public that we'd reject the public law with our own violence to stop the spread of the public inanity with the unknowing, unsuspecting idiot masses. All I know is that I like my space. The trees, the river, the sun and the weather. Just leave me alone. You and your modern views aren't welcome here. Just let me have my space.
Apparently that's not about me since I love my technology. <laughs> So people would laugh at me and be like, oh, you're the camera lady, you're a technology person. And I may have been led in and not had a smartphone for years, but uh, now I'm using that all of the time for posting things on social media on all different platforms and I get kind of psycho crazy with it. But, you know, that's what this whole modern time is supposed to be about, I guess. I don't know. But anywho, um, let me share some other poems with you. I have no idea what these poems are about. So let's go. This one is called Jet Stream of Water. Dreams 3919. Um, to give you guys a heads up, back before I ran the poetry open mic in Chicago, um, the man that originally ran it, who um, handed it over because he was moving, he would occasionally write down dreams references into poems and he would read them and share them with us and since he had done that i if i have a worthwhile you know a memorable dream I'll, I'll write it down and this is one of them i don't know what it means it's called jet stream of water dreams 3919 straddling this yard wide log floating in the water i could see trees in the distance it seemed that this log was a makeshift boat, and I was catching the current. It didn't surprise me that this log was not spinning with me on it, that this log that I could see for at least ten yards in front of me. It didn't turn around, but, but, but others were on it. Like, we were all riding this boat, which was actually a log, down the stream. I didn't wonder why I was here, or who these people behind me were, or where I even was. All that was stuck in my head was the massive jet stream of water lifting the front of my log boat. I mean, I had no oars or anything, so all I could do was try to lean to affect the way the log turned and stop from being overturned into the water. That seemed to me to be deeper than the bottom of the ocean. I only hoped that my log slash boat mates behind me knew to lean forward and in front of me of this log started to rise to over 60 degrees from sea level. And then they'd learn and to lean to avoid turning that log or falling off. And then... The log started to drop. Jet stream of water, dreams 3919. And I've got another dream poem with it. There's two of them. And, ha <laughs> ha, three nine. These are two weeks apart. This piece, not related to the other one, is titled Only Remember Fragments. Dreams 32119. I'm sorry. I only remember bits and pieces. But he was still alive. And he was showing to me this one painting from her. It was a self-portrait. I barely remember seeing any of her paintings when she was alive. She hid them away. I don't know what happened to any of her paintings after she died, but here he was, still alive, showing me her self-portrait. I, I couldn't help but stare. It, it was like the other paintings I barely remember seeing from her. This painting was more mod. Her hair was very 60s, and the only thing I remember seeing were strong lines in deep blue. I, I can't even remember if the painting was finished, because I was too mesmerized by the bold blue brushstrokes defining her hair and the outlines of her form. I don't remember her looking that way, but then again, I, I wasn't alive in the 60s. And as I said... I only remember fragments, but all I can remember was being mesmerized by this painting and thinking, 
that it was beautiful. <laughs> wow. Um, this next one, I have no idea what it's like. Ah, but I think I just saw some of the words, and I think I might know this poem is titled Just the Right Words. You might think that mathematicians and science geeks aren't creative. But those are the guys who theorize all of these crazy ideas. I mean, one of those science dorks had to come up with the Big Bang Theory with no evidence and back it up. But right now, they're talking that maybe there are multiple universes that can occasionally bounce into each other and cause things like the Big Bang. That's the kind of stuff the, that's out there now, straight from the minds of some of these mathematicians and science types. So I made a point to read the news today, an article that, in lieu of one-sentence summaries of research proposals, some scientists are submitting a haiku. <laughs> they call it a psyku. Now, I hear that since I had written a poem for every element in the periodic table, that the journal Science recently published a collection of haiku about the periodic table. I thought I was the only computer science engineer who decided to go the way of the poet, but at least some of those scientists have caught on to what I knew all along, that sometimes a little creativity is and just the right words could make science beautiful to everyone. <laughs> I suppose it is true. I did. I was a computer science engineer at the U of I, third best school in the country. So don't say I don't use my brain bone. It's true. Anywho, I think I have maybe three poems to share with you, and I'll be done with this reading from this book. Excerpts from the Plague Years. This first one is a moody one that's titled Visiting and Seeing the Signs. My grandmother was moving away. I was out of town, so I could only call. And when I got on the phone, I told her that I would be visiting where she was moving to. I could see her in maybe six months. We, we didn't talk much as I got older. So right about when we were going to get off the phone, she said, I love you. And I said, I love you too. I never get this way, but after I hung up the phone, I cried. After that, for three days, when I would walk down the street or look out every window, I would see clouds of black birds and feathers in my darkened skies. Every time I walked outside, a, a biblical apocalypse was swarming over me, and for the life of me, I didn't know why. After three days, I went back to visit my siblings, living only a two-hour drive away, before I took a flight to see my parents. And when I walked through that door to see my sister, my father was there. I walked down the marble-tiled floor to meet him and hug, and when we embraced, I said, Grandma's dead. Because the heavens were giving me the signs for days while she was fighting with her doctors to check her again. And because they wouldn't listen to an old white woman, her symptoms weren't treated, and she dis died before I even came back. I know I cried for her days ago, but I will cry for her again and again. And now I will not question when I am shown the signs again. <sighs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got two more. They're both one-pager poems, and they both have very different themes. These last two poems I'm going to share with you. This first one is titled, Xylograph. My story must be free. No one ever thinks of how I feel. 
artists, philosophers, novelists. They all think nothing of me and they use me until they destroy me. They pay no notice of me unless I can serve their selfish purposes. They give me no regard and then they take a razor to me, peeling me away until they can use me to their own ends. After smearing me all over their pages, they even rub away parts of what I have left until whatever they have splattered is to their liking. They're taking my blood, what's deep inside me, smearing it around into something altogether unholy. And all this time, I want to share my story with the world, but I cannot sculpt what is inside of me in a way the rest of the world could ever understand. Like molding clay, my graphite soul would relay a lifetime of torture from those who only understood abusing me to only meet their own petty needs. Save me from this fate. Etch my words into engravings, letter by letter, to print them for the world to see, so they may finally understand what for millennia they have done to me. I think some of you are looking up what xylograph was, but this poem, it says in very tiny print, this poem is about a pencil. It's about a pencil. <laughs> the life of a pencil. <laughs> All right, one more poem, and it's very short, and it's moody, and I hope you guys appreciate it. I'm sharing this poem with you from the last poem in section two of this issue collection book. This poem is titled, United We Wonder. Spending all day talking about how people can be united. I walked to an American Indian tent and I waited because these storytellers were ready to talk to us. And I realized then and there that we all have stories about what has been taken away from us and how we can keep what is within us to share with all the world so that we can all grow. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was your installment of poetry. You're getting poetry, what? In honor of Tom Woodruff's community poetry at um, Half Price Books, which is in North Austin. He would welcome people to read in rounds. So in honor of that, because it had to have been closed down, I'm here from the 1 to 3 p.m. time on the first Sunday of the month, like you would often do, to be able to share poetry from new book releases with you guys. I hope everyone is remaining safe. I hope everyone is remaining creatively inclined and uh, hopefully the end will be coming soon for this happy-go-lucky pandemic <laughs> and we'll be able to see each other in person again. But in the meantime, stay safe. If you need anything about any of these books, go to scars.tv and you can learn everything you need to know about them. And uh, thank you all so very much. And I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you and seeing you all very, very soon. Thank you very, very much.